Hi, this is Alex Pender from Kids in Need of Defense, and I am here with Ryan Richmond from McCarter and English. He is Ryan is our pro bono attorney of the month. He's an associate with McCarter and English and has helped four children uh, pro bono and representing them in immigration court. Um, he's helped countless more children uh, within the firm and within the firm's pro bono initiative. So we're so happy to have you here, Ryan, and are really excited to talk to you today. Good morning, Alex, and, and thank you for having me this morning. And I also just want to thank Kind for its commitment to um, assisting thousands and thousands of unaccompanied immigrant uh, minors and, and children on a daily basis. So, Ryan, thank you again so much for being here today. Um, well, first question I wanted to ask you is what aspects of the pro bono work um, are different from the everyday work that you do at, um, at your firm? Thank you, Alex. Well, it's, it's really uh, quite different. I'm a product liability and commercial litigation attorney here at McCarter & English, so I'm typically dealing with um, larger, highly educated clients, uh, and I'm typically involved with defending products that they've designed and manufactured. I literally knew nothing about um, immigration law before I attended the first kind information session that I went to, but I'm here today to tell everyone that you don't um, need to know about immigration uh, law before getting involved, involved with KIND or taking on a case. Um, KIND uh, has been a tremendous resource in the process and they've done quite a bit of, of hand-holding for me um, quite frequently at times and KIND has made the transition of working on these cases um, seamless and, and easy. Um, Alex, almost all of our clients um, don't speak English, so at first that was a, quite a uh, challenge, but we have numerous wonderful paralegals and secretaries who have graciously uh, donated uh, a, a quite a bit of time to act as personal translators on a lot of our cases, and we cannot thank them enough for doing that. So, Alex, I would urge uh, not just attorneys that haven't gotten involved in my firm, but all attorneys in New Jersey, and all attorneys throughout the United States to, to get involved. Um, go to the next information session in your area. Um, contact the local um, um, kind coordinator in your area. Uh, just get involved because you can really make a difference in these children's lives. Mm -hmm. And what would you say um, throughout the whole process of, of working pro bono on these cases, what was kind of the biggest lesson learned um, or personal growth moment that you had um, throughout, throughout this process? Well, you know, I've really learned a lot um, from the children that I've had the pleasure of working with. Most of these children live in um, horrific, you know, extreme conditions back in their home country, and their journey um, just to get to the United States can be uh, quite, quite challenging. We can't even imagine uh, the emotions that are going through these children when, when they first step foot in the United States. Despite all of this, in my experience with all of the children I've worked with, they've all had extremely positive attitudes and they're thrilled to be here in the United States and, and given an opportunity that they otherwise um, wouldn't have. There's one child in particular, his name um, is Eric and his attitude is, is really something that I admire and, and strive for um, in my everyday life. So, oh, and, and a little bit, um, I, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about, about Eric, why, um, why he fled his home, um, what it was like meeting him for the first time, and, and really kind of what the process was working with him and, and what he's doing now. Sure, sure. So, um, Eric has, like most unaccompanied minors who um, come to the United States, a, a really tragic story. His, his father abandoned him and um, his mother when he was just, just a few months uh, after he was born. His mom began uh, working in local factories in Honduras to try to, to provide for herself and for Eric. Eric really uh, had no interaction with his father and was really abandoned by his father the entire time that he lived in Honduras until he um, moved here when he was 14. When, so Eric's, Eric's um, mother came to the United States about seven, uh, when, when Eric was seven years old in order to try to provide for a better life for Eric. And she would um, typically uh, 
send money home to Eric's aunt, and, and who who was her sister, who uh, she left Eric in the, in the custody of in uh, Coloma in San in San Pedro Sula, and that area is distinguished by the fact that it's the number one murder capital in in the world the gang activity there is extremely prevalent and and it's on it's unparalleled um eric's aunt in fact was forced to pay a security tax each month just to try to get him to and from school every day so eric's life was basically um going trying to go to and from school every day and then and then coming home and 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 staying at home at his aunt's house in honduras um, at, uh, unfortunately, at some point, Eric's aunt uh, developed a debilitating disease and was unable to care for him. So for all practical purposes, Eric uh, was in Honduras on his own in a gang-controlled area and, and was really frightened for his life. When, we're, when you were working with him, when you were going through the process of applying for um, SIJS, do you think Eric would have been able to do that without your help? Um, well, Alex, I, you know, I, I truly believe, like most unaccompanied uh, minor um, minors in the United States, that Eric would not have been able to navigate the uh, system without the assistance of an attorney, and likely would have, likely, unfortunately, would have been been removed from the country. Uh, from the country, um, if Eric were to be returned to Honduras, uh, he'd be returned to a very, very uh, grave situation, and he would you know, essentially have a threat to his life on a daily basis. Eric is extremely grateful to be here in the United States and is going um, to make the best of, of the opportunity that he recognizes that he has. Absolutely. And kind of a last question I have for you, Ryan, is what, why do you think it's so important for attorneys like yourself to engage as advocates for um, for these unaccompanied children, um, and, and also just as advocates for a pro bono um, pro bono work. Sure. So you know, um, Alex, not everyone is as blessed as as you or me to be born in this country, and I, I think sometimes a lot of us uh, lose lose sight of that. There's a reason why all these children are are fleeing their countries to come to the United States, and I, I personally think that that reason is hope. It's hope for us in these uh, children's lives and give them an opportunity here in the United States that they otherwise wouldn't have back in their home country in, you know, whether that be El Salvador or Honduras. And, I, you know, I know it's, it's very easy as an attorney to say that you're, you know, you're busy and that's an excuse for not doing um, pro bono work, but I would challenge all attorneys out there to contact KIND and, and to take on one of these cases because you're not gonna regret it. And Alex, you know, I'm honored to say that our firm is really committed to serving these children. We um, have an absolutely fantastic internal support system here. I'd be remiss if I did not thank our um, firm leadership and our pro bono coordinator, Michelle uh, Moveahead, for continuing our strong relationship with KIND. I'd also like to thank, you know, all the attorneys, paralegals and secretaries who are already um, involved in many, many um, cases working for these children. Absolutely. And Ryan, you know, Thanksgiving is this week. I just, I have to ask, um, what are you kind of most thankful for this year? Well, Alex, um, my, my wife, uh, Anastasia, and I just had our first baby, um, a beautiful baby girl named Zoe, about uh, two months ago. Um, it is also happens to be my five year anniversary this this Friday. So those are the two things that I'm especially grateful for this year. Wow. Well, congratulations um, on to you and your wife um, on a beautiful baby. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And thank you so much, Brian, for being with us today. Um, we, you know, we thank you so much for all of the pro bono work that you and the firm has done over the years for Kind. Thank you, Alex, and I, ho I hope you have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving, too, and we look forward to continuing our relationship with KIND. Thanks so much. Bye.